Hola, ¿cómo están? Muy bien. Muy bueno. Ah, es un placer para mí estar aquí hoy. Tengo la oportunidad de compartir un poco con ustedes. Y ver a mucha gente que conozco. He venido a la DR y he conocido a algunos de estos nuevos cats. Voy a compartir un poco con ustedes. ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, Esther. Esther, okay. There's a Bible verse there that made me think a lot. There's a uh, chapter 4, verse 14. First one to find the yellow page number. Esther 4. Okay, who had read this book? I just want to challenge all of you to just to go through and read it. It's very good. Book. Uh, I would like somebody to read it because I got a Spanish Bible, so. <laughs> somebody go? Okay. Chapter 4, four verse 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But if you and your father's family, you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to to royal position for such a time as this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, was, I was reading this, uh, thinking a lot in our purpose for life. And I think about myself, and I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony because... I think it's really important to understand that we have a purpose that God had put in us, not that we decided to, to be. Sometimes we wanted to be something, but God created us to do something special. And uh, most of the time we think that we are not created for something special. Uh, or we don't think that we have a talent that is required to do something like God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a village up in the mountains. Uh, I guess some of you have been over there. And it's really in a place where my house is, is not many people live there. But I do not want to live there. I don't have a place that's uh, farther, you know, just a uh, four to five family over there. And I, I, as I was growing up, there's not much to do over there. There's just work a lot and coffee and it's, it's really hard work. So I was there and I don't know much about the city because we don't travel much, we don't have a car by that time and we just have a horses and donkey and things like that. So I wasn't thinking that I was not created for something special, that I have no purpose in my life. And the family that I, I was uh, growing up is not uh, I would say normal family. My father likes to drink a lot and uh, to have a lot of women. So I have a brothers and sister from six different women. And we are 11 total that I know. And so another say that that my brothers, but my father haven't said anything. And my father was really mean. I, I was thinking that he hates me because he gets angry easy with me, and he hit me like uh, he doesn't hit any other of his kids. So I say, what I'm kind of here for? I was thinking that I would better die because I had no reason to. I was not doing good in school. I was afraid with uh, people. I do not talk like doing right now in front of you. I, I don't do that, even in school. We have to learn anything and just get in front and talk to the class. Uh, I can't do that. 
Anytime the teacher asks you, okay, who knows what to say today? Even if I know everything, I just stop, stay quiet. So it was hard for me. And uh, my father, in the beginning when I was a little boy, he had a, I would say, kind of like a lot of money for our country over there. But he has spent it all um, drinking and what different ones. So when I get to uh, 11, my father was broke. And uh, my mom, he was a really good uh, woman. She wants to go to school, but my father won't let her go to school. So she just has to stay there and work, do things for the house. And he was the one who do everything that he wanted. Uh, we, four of us, two brothers and two sisters grew up together. But for some reason, I was thinking that I was not my father's child because the way that he treated me and uh, the work that uh, uh, I was working in the house, everything was so difficult. So I think to me, uh, I have no reason to be alive. <clears throat> and I plan a couple of times to kill myself. I don't try anything, just uh, thinking come to my mind. And I remember once, my father gets so angry. Uh, I don't remember exactly why, but I remember that I was right. But he never asked me what happened. He never asked me. So I was going to, I love the farm. So I got my machete and I walk to the farm. And we have a little uh, store where people come and buy things. Mm. So as I was walking by, there's a guy who came to buy something. I don't know what happened, but the guy just, <coughs> he have a really uh, loud voice. He says something. And my father was behind a little place, and he hear uh, what he said, and then he called me. And I say to myself, just let me leave the machete here, because if I take it with me, he will kill me. Because he was so angry, and I don't know why. So he started beating me like crazy. And I was right, if I get the machete, I will be here today. And uh, as we, he was beating me, my oldest brother came and grabbed my dad like this, but uh, he was afraid of my dad too. He just shake and, and looked my brother, and my brother just walk away. And he kept beating me with everything that he found. And he took me down to the place where we uh, work with coffee. And we got out, um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's uh, kind of like a bell, like this wide and like this thick. He started beating me with that. And then it was from the, my mom to up. And I don't know how she find out about that because she was uh, doing something in the house. And I just find out from my sister like uh, six months ago that she was the one who told my mom that my dad was killing me. So when she get there, she uh, faced my dad. And then my dad like wake up. And they start arguing and I just walk away. I don't know where to go, and that uh, keep thinking in my mind that I wasn't, do, wasn't doing anything alive. But uh, I keep walking and get to my grandma's house. And I start talking to her, she calmed me down, and everything was okay. So things like that happen very often to me, and I was thinking I have no reason to be alive until. Uh, we come to be a Christian. Things start changing a lot. A lot. And I still don't know what the purpose of my life was. Uh, years later, I quit the school and I was in, uh, I would say, 11th grade? No, 10th grade. Okay. I quit school <coughs> and uh, I started doing nothing, just uh, work for my dad. And eventually, I get involved with. Uh, different uh, activities from churches. I started traveling with a missions group that come from here to the Dominican Republic. But I still don't know what the purpose of my life was. So I was there, I just say, I don't know what to do. Don't, never went, went to college and everything, I finished high school. So I don't know what to do. But I keep getting involved in church and things in my life start changing. Uh, I love to read the Bible a lot, I 
spend time reading. And then, kind of like, uh, God just opened my mind just a little bit at a time. I eventually started uh, talking in front of people, not for long, just for two or three minutes. But I start doing something. And uh, I get the opportunity to go to a training Bible program, just one year training down in Panama. It was wonderful, it helped me a lot because I got to do something. I had to teach the Bible to a person. And it was something that I never did before. And I remember uh, the guy who I was doing that with, I let uh, him do it all the time because I don't like to talk uh, in front of people. But he helped me to learning how to teach the Bible to a person. And then I started feeling comfortable doing that. And kind of like uh, start finding uh, my purpose <laughs> in life. Then uh, God was open the door for me to go different places, got the opportunity to, to preach the gospel. <coughs> and uh, I got, got the opportunity to go back to the school and finish high school and went to college. I got three more, more classes to take, but uh, I will get my degree. So it is uh, things that happened to me when I look back and I say that uh, just God can do things like that to me. Because I come from top of the mountains, the middle of nowhere, nobody knows me, nobody knows where my village is at. And then I come down from over there and got the opportunity to start a church in a place that uh, there wasn't a Christian church. And I got the opportunity there, and I got the opportunity to uh, baptize people and see their life change. And I see, and I self say to myself, God really know how to work with me. So, and I say, if He can do that to me, He can do that to anyone. Because I never think that I'm going to be in front of people just teaching, preaching the gospel. And I have seen how things are changing in people's life. And I see myself never again thinking to kill myself or to not have a purpose in life. And this is why this Bible verse is so important to me because no matter where you are, God has a purpose for your life. No matter who you think you are, if you trust the Lord with all your heart, he will open the doors, He will uh, get everything for you to see it, that you are here to do something. Something that He create, created before uh, you were born. Something that He is expecting you to do. There's a lot of people around you that need to know Jesus. And uh, I never had the opportunity to talk to Jesus about them. Then won't have the opportunity either, but you do. So, and I think we come to the day where we have a lot of things to get involved. We got a lot of uh, technology to spend time. And we kind of running away to a relationship with people, kind of running away to get to share the gospel face to face with people because we are so busy with other things. But this is not uh, the purpose for our life. We got to get the opportunity to talk to people, to uh, let them know that there is a Lord Jesus who loved them so much that gave him one life just to save people like you and me. And those people are everywhere. So there is not, nothing more important than share the gospel with people. If you do that, you will find a way, uh, you will find uh, your purpose in life. There is another Bible verse in uh, Ephesians, is how you say it? Ephesians 4, where uh, he talks about a different gift that has been given to us. 8 to 8. For something special. The gift that he had given you, probably he did not give them to you. So that I means the things that you can do, I cannot. Even if I try, I won't be good doing that. And that's what I told our, our people in our church over there. 
God did not give me the gift to sing. Even when I love music and I love singing, this is not my gift. <laughs> so I say I do not spend time trying to uh, do something that I am not good. I love uh, guitar, so I got one guitar like 20 years ago and I wanted to learn it. I went to a guy who teach me how and he taught me how to use my left hand and I get to know everything from the top to the bottom with this hand. But I cannot use both hands together. <laughs> <laughs> I try, no, nope, I can't. I cannot use it. And then I find out that this is not my gift. So when I started looking for another gift that God had given me, that I would be much better uh, doing things. And I found uh, different ways that I have the opportunity to get close to people, to teach them the gospel, and I feel like uh, now I'm something uh, useful, that God can use me to do His purpose on life. So, no matter who you are, no matter who you think, no matter, no matter where are you now, God has a perfect purpose for your life. It's the same with a lady, I uh, would say Esther. Can you say Esther? Esther. So maybe she doesn't know the reason why she was there until the moment was needing her. She do not want to because she said, Well, this is not me, what can I do? But they, this guy let her know, who knows if you are there just for this moment. And then what she did saved a lot for her life for her people. So it's the same to you and it's the same to me. There is a special purpose why God has created you and me. And why He has given you the talent, how is that right? Talent or gift that He has given to you. There is a reason. I don't know the reason. But if you don't know, just God can show you the way, uh, can show you the reason, can tell you why you're there, why you were in this family, why you were, uh, why you are where you are. So this world is getting worse. Evil is growing. And we as a Christian, I don't know. Here, but I can talk for my people in the Dominican Republic. We are kind of uh, walking by, but the evil people, they are working for. So what's going to happen? A lot of people will die without knowing Jesus. But if we do what we're supposed to do as a Christian, we will save a lot of people. So there is a purpose for you. There's a purpose why God created you and put you in the perfect place to be. So, I hope uh, you understand that and give your best to the Lord, I will say. Thank you so much. Did somebody read the Ephesians chapter 4 for us? Is it first? There's the one we can read. Did somebody read for us 4 through 8? Yeah. Did somebody read Ephesians 4, 4 through 8? Thank you, Gordon. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given to Christ, appointed it, apportioned it. This is why, this is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. And then could you also read 11 and 12, please? 
It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors, pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Thank you very much. Hey, we're going to dismiss here in a couple of minutes to go to our deep room. I want to fly.